while you're standing, will you turn your Bible to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6? 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. All of you online, I want to indulge you to stand. We're going to spend the next three to five minutes to pray. Glory to God. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. Let's read together. Let's read God's word together. I want to go. Wherefore, I put in remembrance that thou what? Stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting up of my hands. What is this gift of God? Verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. You're going to put your hands on your belly. I stir up the spirit of faith. I take massive action. I have phenomenal courage. I'm not limited. I'm not fearful. Hallelujah. I'm taking bold step in life. I'm taking massive steps in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go ahead. what it says and what it doesn't say verse 6 he said if I put you remember it that you stir up it's not God that stirs it up for you you are the one that stirs it up maybe you are here you're feeling discouraged you're feeling overwhelmed you're feeling depressed stir up joy stir up joy stir up joy hallelujah he says he says I'm putting remembrance that you stir up the gift of God which is in you how did he come? By the putting up of my hands. Verse 7 says, For God has not given us. He tells us what he has not given us. He has not given us the spirit of fear. Don't be afraid of raising that hundred million for your project. Don't be afraid of the limitation in business. Don't be afraid that you will not hit your goals. He said he has not given us the spirit of fear. Somebody say, I'm full of the spirit of faith. He said he has not given us the spirit of fear. But what of power? But what of love? Of what of a sound mind? Oh, glory to God. I said, glory to God. I said, glory to God. The steps you need to take, no matter how huge they are, no matter how big they are, see yourself taking it. Because you have the spirit of what? Of faith. Somebody say, I have the spirit of faith. You need to say it boldly, loudly. Say, I have the spirit of faith. Say, I have phenomenal confidence. I have unusual courage. I have big faith. Faith is at work in me. I take big steps. I have massive results because I walk in faith. Fear is alien to me. Fear is alien to me. Fear is alien to me. If you believe, shout yes. Glory to God. I have the spirit of faith. Oh, my so called all over the shit. I have the spirit of faith. No man, make a shot up by I'm not going to shrink my dreams. I'm going to grow my faith. I'm not going to quit on my dreams. I'm going to grow my faith. I'm not going to stop believing. I'm going to keep believing. Because the Bible says the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. This year I will not be disappointed. This year I will not be denied. This is my year. My expectation shall be surpassed. It shall be surpassed. It shall be surpassed. It shall be surpassed. In business, it shall be surpassed. In my spiritual life, it shall be surpassed. As a church, it shall be surpassed. In marriage, it shall be surpassed. Shall I receive it? Your 
fear will not drown your faith your faith will drown your fear oh glory to God I say glory to God I say glory to God I say glory to God I want to read to you one more time he said but God has not given us the spirit of fear every time you find yourself fearful say this is not what God has given me you're fearful you will not get promoted that's not the will of God you're fearful you'll not get married that's not the will of God for God has not given me the spirit of fear but of power the ability to make things happen that's power the ability to produce change that's power that's power I have someone say have the spirit of power oh glory to God physics says power is the ability to what to move an object from one location to another location that means I have the power to move my business to the next level say I have the spirit of power say I am not powerless I have the spirit of power I have the spirit of faith all things are possible to me 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 I am a believer all things are possible to me I'm the seed of Abraham all things are possible unto me I have the faith of God all things are possible unto me all things are possible unto me if you believe shout yes as you go into this week I declare where you have not tried before you will try there where you have failed before you will do well there where you have been struggling before there will be ease in the name of the Lord Jesus I declare that your expectation will not be messed up you will not experience disappointment from glory to glory from victory to victory that will be your sound in the name of Jesus Christ the resource you need is released the resource you need is released God is raising men for your sake set aside protocol for your sake in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ you will find yourself doing bigger things than you ever thought you will find yourself having bigger results than you imagined in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ oh thank you Jesus Praise God. Did you receive it? I have the spirit of faith. I'm sorry if I don't talk fear. I'm sorry if I don't talk small thoughts. But the truth is that I have the spirit of faith. Praise God. You can say hello to your neighbor and tell them that to just tell them I have the spirit of faith no way say it as if you mean it say, say I listen I, I have the spirit of faith all things are possible to me I am a believer all things are possible to me praise God I don't quit I don't give up I don't fail all things impossible to me praise God hallelujah so some of you that I said that I don't understand 2023 it's going so much go and dust your dreams 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 all things are possible to me all things are possible to me praise the Lord please you may have your seats Is there someone that came into this church? You came in, you came in a bit down, a bit depressed. You came in this morning. That, that's how you came to church. Where are you? You came a bit down, a bit depressed. Anybody like that this morning? I have a couple of hands, you know. I don't know who to call. You know, maybe I should call this lady in black over here. Give her a microphone. You came in down, you came in depressed. And don't go back to why you came because you've changed. Yeah, so how do you feel right now? Tell me what happened before you came. Tell me what happened before you came. Yeah. Okay, good morning, church. Good morning. Um, this past week has been up and down for me. Wow. Um, in the sense that 
I wanted to, I slated something I wanted to do this week, and to be honest, I didn't do anything. You didn't achieve it? I didn't do anything. Okay. Like, I wasted, there, there were days I made excuses, my system was misbehaving, and just kept making excuses, and just widening away time. It's a seamless message designed for you, I'm telling you, because yes, all sir. the things you're talking about is what I'm preaching about this morning. <laughs> so Thank how do you God. feel right now? Much better. Much better. Much better. Just coming to the service. Why do you feel much better? Because I just make you say. See, the Bible says, I bring you to remembrance. It says, stay up the gift of God. How do you stay up? By saying it. How do you stay up? By saying it. So do you feel the same way when you came to church? You feel no. a lot better? I actually made the decision to come early to church this morning. Like, I just wanted to feel that, that You wanted present. to feel exactly the yeah, way you're feeling right like, now. I just wanted to come That's amazing. to church. That's yeah. amazing. Praise the Lord. The worst thing that can happen to you is when you're going through a tough time to pull away from church. It to just make it worse. When you're sick, the worst thing is to stay from the hospital. The best is to go to the hospital. Give the lady, there was someone, another person that raised up their hand that felt a certain way. There's someone, there's a brother in front, but I want someone in the middle. Just wave your hands at me and say, you, you, left, you said, yeah, this lady, yeah. What, what happened? Good morning, church. Good morning. Yeah, the past week has been up and down like i run a business a fashion house so there was no sales last week no sales and things were just going no light the whole week where i stayed there was no light no light and getting money to buy fuel it was really tough so you so you how did you feel how did you feel eventually even coming to church this morning was a miracle it was a miracle yes but how do you feel right now better you feel a lot better I'm glad that you feel love, but yeah, it's just going to get better and better right now because we've never preached and you feel a love. There's a brother in front here, as well, my brother, and you know, let's let's. I want to hear his story. Tell me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Before I came here this morning, I I was really scared, very very scared. You were scared, scared of what? Yeah, I had an issue in my marriage. Okay. And uh, my wife had to leave packed the things and left. And ever since then, I've been very scared of women. I've been very scared. You're like, very scared. Scared, very scared. So what's scaring you with women? <laughs> Tell me. I've always wanted to treat women right, especially my wife. Okay. I want to go out of my way to please So what's her. scaring you? So now, everything I do, it seems, yes, I'm not trying as a man. You're not, you're not trying enough? Yes. Okay. And now... So, what, what is wrong with the fact that if you know you're not trying enough, what's wrong with that? And what's wrong is because I think um, when we started, everything was... Financially, I was very strong. Yeah. And now I'm not that strong as You're not before. that strong. So, I think that's, um, that brought... A so, that's brought the challenge. Challenge. Okay. But so, what are you going to do now? What I need to do now is... Uh, she made up her mind to leave. What are you going to do? Not her. No her. Yeah, what are me, you going to do now? I, I, I just want to stay on my, like, my own. I just pray to God. Ever since I started my life, I didn't pray to God of who I want to marry or seek God's counsel. So, so what are you going to do now? No, I, now, I need to bring him in. You need to bring him in? God, I need Fantastic. to bring him into my life. I need Fantastic. To, I, need to, I, 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 need, I need to tell him, this, Lord, help me. I cannot do it by emotions. Okay, everybody pay attention. Listen to this. Every time you go through a very painful experience, ask yourself one question that can deliver you. What am I learning? That's how you turn pain into lesson. And once pain is turned into lesson, the pain is minimized. The pain is what? Minimized. Yeah. So my brother, you know, if, if your wife says you're not trying enough, it, that's a feedback. Let me tell you why it hurts you so much. Because when you say you're not trying enough, you're, you seem like some that love results. You're getting frustrated that how come I'm not producing results? But maybe what you want to think is about what am I learning? Yeah, maybe and you feel as if I should just give up. But today, all things are what? Possible to you. So you can make your marriage work. What? You have a meeting today. That's fantastic. That's a good step. So when you go to that meeting, don't go say, I'm just going to go. No, no, say all things are possible. I'm going to go back to get my wife. I'm going back to get my wife. Why? All things are possible to me. Is a good marriage possible for you? Yeah. Can you get your wife back? You can. Like, give him the microphone. I can't hear him. Can, can you do that? Yes, I can. You can. I, can, I, can't, I, can't, I don't even know if you believe it. Can you do that? That's what I'm asking you. 
I will do that. Exactly. That are you going to do that today? Are you going to do that today? I will give a, I will give, I will give a chance. Are you going to do it today? Are you going to get up back today? Today. 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 today, today Why? Today. You are a believer. All things are possible to yeah. him that believe it. So when you go into that meeting today, you will have one intention. No matter how it goes, I'm not going to fight. I'm going to get back my wife. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. No, 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 no. It needs to sink inside. It's not sunk inside yet. You're still struggling. I can see that you believe you'll get her back, but you don't believe you get her back today. So what's the problem with getting her back today? I believe after the service, the, the healing will be completed. Yeah, it'll be completed. No, no, no. The healing can happen right now. We don't have to wait after the service. Lift up your two hands. Let's pray. Stretch forth your hands towards him. Let's pray that God will heal him. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Look at me, my brother. What are you saying? And Father, we're praying. The Bible says that you bind up the brokenhearted. Will you please do this today? Thank you for this brother that you have singled out and you are healing and binding him up right now. In Jesus' name. Hold the microphone to your mouth. I want to say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I receive. I receive. Your healing. Your healing. For my pain. For my pain. I receive healing. I receive healing. For my marriage. For my marriage. I receive healing. I receive healing. For myself. For myself. I trust that you are working on my wife and I pray for her. I trust that you are working on my wife and I pray for her. That she will also receive healing. That she will also receive great healing. I receive healing and wisdom right now. I receive healing and wisdom right now. I will know what to say. I will know what to say. I will know what to do. I will know what to do. To make the marriage work. To make the marriage work. Amen. Amen. That's a good place to start. That's a good place to start. Praise God! Brother, brother, stand on your feet. I want you to jump up three times and shout three hallelujah because it's not... Uh, exactly. Uh, three, four more times, four more times. Jump up. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Give me the microphone. Don't sit down yet. How do you feel now? Oh, much better. Are you going to get back your marriage? Yes, I will. You will? I will. That's it. That's it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Give, give, give Anomzi the phone, the, the microphone. She has a big testimony, but we couldn't show it today. She prayed for someone, connected the person to the 1pm prayer that was dead, that came back alive. Give us the one minute version. I have the whole videos. I have the picture of the man when he came back alive. Yeah, just the one minute version. Okay, I'll try. Good morning, church. Good I'm morning. Pastor B. So, um, there is this lady that stays in our house and she's been living with us for a very long time. So, fast forward to Thursday morning, she has sent me a message and was asking for a particular song that I always play and it's called Out of My Belly. So, I, gave, I sent her the song and after like two hours, I got a call from the house that apparently her father had died and her name is Blessing. So, it really hits everybody because she's a lovely girl. She holds on to God. She's always praying. And likewise, her father as well. He's always calling to, get, to tell us thank you and everything. So I already, you know when you already have what she wants to say to someone. So I called her and the first thing that could come out of my mouth was, you know what, blessing. Only God knows why you asked me for that song. Keep listening to it and keep praying. There's nothing that God cannot do. Um, and I said to her, I'll do the same thing. And we prayed, we cried, we called on God. This was Thursday when we were fasting. I joined the 1 p.m. prayer. We joined the 1 p.m. One prayer, one prayer as a family. Um, we prayed. Afterwards, we went back without breaking our fast. We continued praying. And after like an hour and a half, she sent a message. They had called from Edo and said, they don't know what happened, but he woke up. And this was someone that was, and this was someone that was already 
He was already smelling. He, he was, was already, already smelling. He was doctor, cold, already smelling. He was already cold. The doctor had already said, take, they had already taken his body away from the hospital, already on the way to mortuary. On the way to the mortuary. And he woke And up. the power in the name of Jesus brought him back. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? God is healing marriages. God is helping depressed people. God is raising the dead. This is what the gospel of Jesus Christ is. Oh, glory! If you don't feel excited, I feel bad for you. Praise God. Next level prayer continues tomorrow. Invite more people that are dead so that they can be resurrected back to life. Because there's nothing our God can do. If you don't join the prayers, you miss a lot. Amen. Proverbs chapter 26 in verse 13. And today, as you can, you know, really, really, really see into, I'm talking about breaking the fear factor or dealing with the fear of failure. Breaking the fear factor and dealing with the fear of failure. If in this teaching, and this teaching is going to be short, and I'm going to continue full in the second service, so you can go back home and watch, and all of you online, you can go back home and also watch the second service. And if you want to share the link for the service with other people, go ahead and share it. All of you in, the, in our online church, go ahead and share it. Sometimes you wonder, and this is what the teaching is about. Like the lady said, she was saying that this week I didn't achieve much, and that's what I want to speak to. People that feel as if, you're going to find out why you've not been achieving so much. How, why you've not been achieving up to your potentials. And what you can do to change that. You're going to find out, why am I stuck? And what I can do to change that. You're going to find out, why can I do so much, but I have so little results. I don't know if someone is like that. You, know, you, you really know that my business can make like this huge amount of money. But is this amount of money you're making? And you, you feel frustrated. You really think that by this time of your life, you should be in this place, but you've not gotten there. And that's what we're speaking in today. Glory to God. Maybe we should start from Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13, verse 30. It's, it's a long reading. Because many people struggle with fear. At some point in my life, it took someone to help me see that even though I'd been a Christian for a long time and a pastor, I was struggling with fear. The reason why is that for some people, there, there are people that their fear is obvious. They verbalize it, they live in it. There are some people that their fear is hidden. When fear is hidden, you know what people say? They always give a lot of excuses for not doing what they do. Because the fear is hidden. They may never be even aware of it. When fear is obvious, we just say, I'm afraid, I can't do it. But when fear is hidden, they say things like, it's a lot of things they say. They, they, they say, I just keep procrastinating. Nah, you're afraid. Because at the root of procrastination is fear. So I say, I just cannot get myself to do it. Because at the root of no motivation is fear. Most of the time when you have no motivation, it's fear. Because you're afraid of that particular thing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just a minute. Is this pulpit aligned? Or I need to move it up to my right a little? Cameraman. Should I move it like this? Is this okay? Oh, I just destroyed it. Praise God. So fear is there. So let's look at Numbers chapter 13. So this is really bless everyone. And if you know someone, some of you are married to someone that is very fearful. Some of you have a friend that is very fearful. This message will change. This is a message you want to share with them. Numbers chapter 13 in verse 30. Numbers chapter 13 in verse 30. Glory to God. Numbers chapter 13 in verse 30. This speaker is making some noise, so you can help me fix it. We can just disconnect. This was when, what had happened here, what had happened here was simple, that Moses had sent the elders of Israel to go and see the promised land. So, I wanted to listen to all the things they said. Verse 30. So, Caleb, one of the youngest guys that went, stealed the people before Moses and said, let us go ahead at once and possess it. For we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went with him said, We be not able to go against the people. For they are stronger than us. Wow. 
The Bible says they brought an evil report. The word evil report could also be translated a fearful report. How do two people see something and one person have faith and that has fear? That means that, that's huge. Glory to God. And they brought an evil report. And they have searched and they searched and they had searched unto the children of Israel saying, the land which we've gone to see is a land that eat it up. Just imagine how they describe the land. They say the land eats up its inhabitants. This our business industry is a tough one. Does that sound familiar? It's so hard to make money in this country. As a young girl, if you don't sleep around, nobody will help you. Oh, wow. You can't become rich without doing wrong stuff. Oh, wow. The Bible says, they said, the land eaten up the inhabitants. They had this terrible report. And all the people, <laughs> all the people we saw in our great stature. Oh, my God. Why is it important to break fear? Number one. Because fear keeps on magnifying the problem and sees no way out. What does fear do? Fear has a way of magnifying. Look at the verse. I want to look at the verse. The verse says, and everyone we saw was a giant. That is not true. Look at what it says. It says, and all the people we saw in it are men of great stature. In another words, they are all giants. When you begin to say, nobody does well in my country. Is that true? Nobody hits their target. Is that true? Nobody can be sexually pure. Is that true? But what fear does is this. Fear keeps on magnifying the problems and see no way out. What does faith do? Faith sees a way all the time. So, fear sees no way. Faith sees a way. Fear sees no way. Faith sees a way. Someone says, how do I know if I'm in faith or fear? Do you see a way? So, you have approval issues. You have proposal issues. Once you don't see a way, you're walking in fear. Once you see a way, you're walking in faith. Caleb and Joshua said, we are able to possess this. We can do this thing. See, you can raise the capital for your business. You can. But fear says, I don't know anybody. What do I know? You can get married. Fear says, we will get, we will get you married. Fear says, how can you hope you will have an office space of your own? Next chapter, chapter 14. In verse 4, fear is a terrible thing. Number chapter 14, verse 4. And they said one to another, let us make a captain. This was when they had the book. Let us make a captain and what? And return. Let, let's do it together. I want to go. I want to go. Relax, relax, relax. You are, you are full of faith. Read with faith and confidence. I want to go. What does the, so the first thing fear does is to magnify the problems and what? And see no way. The second thing fear does makes you give up. Who, who is identifying with this? Makes you give up. Let me tell you something. Some of you eventually start, but within two or three attempts, it doesn't work. You pack your load. Because fear makes you give up. So you give up on the marriage. You give up on the job. You give up on your... How many of you got born again and maybe you're struggling with an addiction and you find yourself still pornographing and you find yourself still having all those multiple sexual partners and you just give up? How many of you are trying to pray and you can't go and you just give up? And that's what fear does. Fear makes you give up. You know, I was reading this story, and this is not a Christian story. I don't know how many of you know about Disney, Walt Disney Center. Do you know about Walt Disney? Don't talk to me, somebody. Yes, talk to like people that have faith. Yes, exactly. People, Disney, Walt Disney, the, the founder of Walt Disney, approached 200 and I think 40 something banks before he got his first bank approval for a loan. Question. You said, you, people have. Nobody's willing to help you. Have you spoken to 240 people? 
this is what Disney, they, nobody believed in this vision. Just imagine, this is, this is not even in our own country or continent. This is in the US, what they believe in dreams. And he went to one, two, three, four. By the time he got to the 10th bank, I thought he should be tired. By the time he got to the 50th bank, I thought he should be tired. By the time he got to the 70th bank, I thought he should be tired. He kept on going because for him, faith sees a way. How many, how many of us have stopped setting goals because we set goals for three years? It never worked. You set, you set a weight-losing goal and you've not, you know, I, I, remember, I, I remember sometime I would go, I was working on, on losing weight about three years ago and, you know, some weeks I would just go higher the scale because I didn't do the right things and the person that was helping me said, it's okay, you can just start again. And that gave me just, because sometimes, he said, it's okay, you can start again. Fear keeps quitting. Now, you, you're already quitting already. You, this 2023, you're already saying that this year is not going well. It's too early to say some things like that. Let me ask you a question. Everybody look up here. Are there not things that in the long run you were just wrong about? You, let me say it this way. Are there not things you judge too early in your life? Let's be honest. Are there not things you judge too early in your life? When you were in university, the people you thought would become the biggest boys in your class, are they the ones... The people you thought are irresponsible and nobodies, are they not the richest right now? Didn't you judge too early? There are things you judge too early. But why do you judge too early negatively? Because of your fears. Look at Numbers chapter, chapter 14. Are you there? So, wh why is it important? So, number one, if you find yourself magnifying your problems, if you find yourself seeing no way, if you find yourself often quitting, those are issues. Those are big issues. Look at Abraham. Huh. Fearful people often quit and they never do great things. This is where I put it. If you run from fear, you will never accomplish much in life. If you run from fear, you will never accomplish much in life. The third thing about fear is this. Why, why is it important to break the power of fear? Because fear is a robber. Fear is what? It's a thief. Fear would turn a man that is confident and take away his confidence. Fear would take away people's dreams. Look at the story we read right now. Do you know that eventually only Joshua and Caleb, Caleb saw the promised land? Fear robbed all of them of seeing the promised land. Fear robs people of potentials, robs them of destiny, robs them of their future. Not too long ago, I saw a guy at the airport. We were in university together, and we were both pastoring together. I remember when we were leaving school, some of us that were pastors knew that the call of God was upon our life to start a church. I was one of those people, so we were discussing. And I said, well, I know that eventually I'm going to start a church. I'm pastor. And he said the same thing. And we just, and another guy, about three or four of us said the same thing. So I've not seen him for a long time, and I met him at the airport. And when he saw me, he said, Pastor Bolaji, ah, you tried, oh. And he just encouraged me. He said, I said, what about you? How is the ministry? He said, I'm still working on starting. I said, excuse me. Since we left school, up till now. I said, you're still working on starting. Question, is that not how you carried your goal, away your goals from last year to this year? You're still working on starting. You want to ask someone to help you with funds. You've been waiting for six months. You want to ask someone to help you connect you with something. You're ready for three months. You want to join the workforce. Say, I'm afraid I'll not have all the time. What are you waiting for? Dealing with the power of fear. So what does fear do? See, fear, fear, fear is a robber. Fear is a robber. Fear is a robber. The, the fourth thing about fear is this, which is very powerful. Which, and this one, I, we've thought about it so many times. So you must ask yourself, how many of you here has fear robbed you? Do you know there are girls that can't say yes to a lover? Not because they don't love him, because of the fear of being getting hurt. They cannot even be calm to allow someone to love them. Fear. 
Everybody struggles with fear. I remember eventually when God told me to start the church, I mean, those that were here very early, Pastor Joe will tell you, you know, I kept on postponing, so I would say, we'll start in three months' time. Then three months, I said, we'll start in three months' time. I said, three months, I said, three months' time. And I kept on going, 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 just because I was afraid. I was so nervous the day our church started. Many of you will not see that picture. I didn't wear socks. I was so nervous, I forgot to wear socks. I just wore shoes. So the question I want to ask you is this. This is the question I want to ask you. What has fear robbed you of? Write it down. Write it down. What has fear robbed you of? Because fear has robbed people. So three, we said, number one, what, has, what, has, what problem has fear magnified in your life? Number two, where has fear showed you there is no way? Number three, where have you given up because of fear? Number four, what has fear robbed you of? Where's my microphone? Give it to her over here. Yeah. Give it to her over there. Yeah. What has fear robbed you of? Yes. Yeah. What has fear robbed you of? What has fear magnified? Yeah. Just give it to her. It's okay. Just give it to her. It's okay. Yeah. So are you fearful right now because you have the microphone? Is fear going to rob you of the opportunity of we learning from you? Or you need a moment first to think about it. Okay, give it to the guy behind you. The, the guy with the t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. What have fear robbed you of? I would say um, some very important decisions. Okay. Yes, uh, I had an opportunity to travel out. You had an opportunity to travel out? Yes. And what happened? You were so afraid. Uh, I was, it looked like I was just starting my life then, and I just yeah. said, no, nah, let me just... You are afraid that if you travel out, everything will scatter. Yes, at that And point. now you regret it. Yeah. You regret it, right? Yes. You regret it, right? How, it pains you a lot sometimes. True. Huh? Yes. It pains, how, how much does it pain you? When does it pain you the most? When does it pain you? Tell me, tell me the time it pains you the most. When Nigeria is messing up. Well... When Nigeria is messing up. When you are, Nigeria when the is country messing is messing up. Oh, wow. Yes, we are like so when you see your salary compared to the dollars, you're like, what am I doing here? <laughs> Sometimes, true. Fantastic. Give it back to her. Praise God. Yeah, tell me. What has fear robbed you of? What have fear made you stop trying? Yeah, tell me. Um, fear has robbed me of enjoying good good love i don't know how to explain it fear has robbed me of yeah enjoying good relationships why what, what fear is that i don't want violence you're afraid that you get into a violent relationship yes wow and it robbed me of my engagement and it robbed you of your engagement yeah oh wow to tell, tell me Because I saw the violent tendencies and maybe, as I said, I was just scared and I just see things when, I'm not, when it's not even happening the way it's supposed to happen. But because I'm scared... Because fear magnifies the problem. Yeah, it does. Your, your, your boyfriend goes, what's happening to you? He said, don't beat me. Did that happen to you? Yes, yeah, very true. And he goes like, I'm not beating you. I'm just proving a point. But because your track record is like that... And you begin to project into a relationship what is not there, and eventually you ruin the relationship. How do you feel about what fear did to you? Fear robbed me, of course, but I know God is good and kind to me, and as you said, I can always start afresh. I wanted to see something very powerful. Thank you, my sister. I want to see something. I want to see something. Everybody that eventually allowed fear ended up regretting. That is where I want you to be today. I don't want you to regret at the end of this year. There's going to be true pain. It's either the pain of confronting your fears or the pain of regretting it. You're going to, so let me tell you something, that business, confront it. You're going to regret it. Praise God. Thank you for sharing that with us. So what is fear? What is fear? What does fear tell us? The first thing fear tells us is this. Watch this now. 
The reason why you're afraid, this is why people get afraid. Fear is a sign that you're out of your comfort zone. Praise God. Fear is a sign that what? So it tells you that because it's a new area, there's possible danger. Fear is the sign. So the reason, see, sometimes fear is not bad. You must know the truth. There's good fear. There's the fear of God, which is good fear. But fear is, fear is emotion that you're out of what? Your comfort zone. And most of you that like control, most of you that like certainty, you just struggle in that area. Because fear is that I'm in a new place. They say, be a sound leader. You say, I can't. Not that you can't. But being a sound leader is just a comfort zone for you. I announced that we have three hours of prayer meeting. You say, ah, no, I can't pray that long. You can pray that long. You're just out of what? Your comfort zone. So every time you're afraid, remember, fear shows I'm out of what? My comfort zone. And what is fear? You know the acronym, right? Falls what? Experiences what? Can I have my guns? This is what fear looks like. Come, Cali B. Face them. You see, hands up. He doesn't know if he's a real gun or not. He's responding because it feels like a gun. But it's what a gun. The question is this. The question is this. Many of you, what Satan is going to scare you does not exist. He's using water gun. He's not a real gun. He's using water gun. In your relationship, he's using water gun. In your finance, he's using water gun. But, but it feels like gun because what's he saying? Hands up. It, it, it talks like it. Hands up. Does it feel like a gun? Yeah, it feels like a gun because you, you, you can tell. And, and you say, hands up. If you move, I blow your head. But the thing, so he's, just, he's just water gone. That's why we say, what is fear? F, false. E, experience. A, appearing. A, R, real. Either false experience or false evidences appear. So, Satan is, many of you, you must know something. He's just playing with your emotions. Water gone. What are you scared of? Water gone. In your business, what are you scared of? So the devil says, if you ask your manager for a raise, he will be very angry. Do you notice he has not, that's not what will happen. He just put that thought in your mind. What a God. Many of you, you know the fear you have? If I become so involved in church, hope I'll not lose my mind. Fear. What is fear? Falls. Evidences or experiences appearing real or fantasized experiences appearing real because fear is not based on reality, it's just imagination. Because in fear, it's something you think, you know, let me show you how fear works. So you're afraid of asking for that contract. But the reason why you're afraid is this. Let me give you the whole story. I'm afraid of applying for that contract because I will be rejected because I don't know anybody. But that's Statement, I'll be rejected, I don't know anybody, does not exist. It's what your mind has what? Created. That's false experiences. Where's my picture? First of all, thank you for my birthday. Praise the Lord. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I, I was so much in the spirit and trying to help. I, I didn't get to. So, on my birthday, I, I, got, I got this picture and I thought to use it. You can put it here. You can put it here. I got this from our staff. Good. This is what fear looks like. Pastor B is watching you. But I'm not there. It's just a picture. Do you get it? This is what fear looks like. Listen, if I'm here right now, I'm here watching you. But now, I'm not here. It's just a picture. So Satan uses the picture to scare you. The picture is so real that it begins to scare you. The picture of failure is so real that you don't make an attempt. The picture is so real it begins to scare you. The picture. But the question, is that me or this is me? Where am I? Am I over there? Am I here? Why is that scaring you? 
the reason why is that, you know, the thing, eh? If you, I understand how it feels, because let me give you a, a scenario. Just imagine you're about to take a bribe. And this picture just stands in that office looking at you. It's almost as if I'm there. So you're like, oh, wow, no, 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 no. <laughs> right in front of my pastor. But your pastor is not there. It's just a picture. Satan says that. Let me put pictures so real to them. That scares them. Question is that, what picture has he put in your office? What picture has he put about your grandchildren? That is so scary. He's put the picture, listen, he's put the picture of you not having a children so real that it scares you. He's put the picture of you not getting married so real that it scares you. He's put the picture of delay so real that it scares you. He's put the picture of you going down so real that it scares you. But remember, it's just a picture. What is fear? False evidences appearing real. It's either going to be a weapon that is false or a picture that does not exist. A picture of what is real, but it's just a picture. Glory to God. How do I know I have fear? Number one, you find yourself hesitating and procrastinating a lot. If you're like that, wave your hands. Let me see you. Identify. Don't lie. In Jesus' name. Raise up your hands. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me tap your neighbor and say, is that you? If you find yourself hesitating and wave, 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 wave. Look at some of you. You're dating her now. This is the third year. When are you going to engage her? You want to turn her into Lord of the Rings? You can me take this, this picture. Is that what you want to turn her into? Some of you, you will just stay with the sister in church and parabolate and parabolate and parabolate and parabolate. You cannot commit. And people think you're a player, but the truth is that you're not a player. You're just very uncertain. You've worked on that idea right now. You've, you've worked on that idea, but to do something, you've never done something. How many of you here have got told you about giving, tithing? And you say, This at 23 from January, I will start. I will give my icy covering first, then I'll start tithing. It's now March. Have you started? And, and the reason why is that as soon as you want to tithe, there's a fear that it will not be enough. Yes or no? Exactly. And let me tell you something. The more you lean into fear, the more fear has a hold on you. Glory to God. So when people fear, they hesitate, they procrastinate. The third thing is that they focus on the negative. Oh yes, you saw that with jo Caleb and Joshua. They focus on the negative. They focus on the negative. They focus on the negative. When people have fear, you can sit in their talk. They are always talking fear. But the Bible says, God has not given us the spirit of what? Of fear. But of power. Of love. Of sound mind. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. Praise God. You see them always talking negative. Always talking negative. I told you that fear shows you are out of your comfort zone. The second thing fear shows you is this. Sometimes, when God gives you a dream, fear is the proof that you hate God. <laughs> because most dreams that God gives you is always bigger than you. So sometimes fear is a good thing because fear makes you lean into God. I was reading, you know, <laughs> I was listening to, um, I was discussing with someone, one of the pastors, um, I was in the, with Bishop Udeko, Pastor Pojo and Pastor Pojo was sharing, it was just a story was sharing, he said that when they went on television, their ministry, he said all the money they had in the whole church, they could pay for, I think, one season of their television cast, and when they finished paying, they didn't have any money again. He said, what would they pay the next month? He said, there was no money again. He said, but I took the step of faith. He said, Within the first month, all the money they will need to pay for the next time came out. Sometimes as human beings, you want to see all the steps arranged. But sometimes all you have to do is to step out and see the glory of God. Are you here? And you know why I'm saying this? Because as we teach on success, you will only manifest success to the level of your what action. What will stop your action? Fear. If you like, 
pray to tomorrow. If your prayer is not accomplished by action, you will not see results. If you like, fast to tomorrow. If your fast is not accomplished by action, you will not see results. Listen, and what limits action is what? Fear. So the question is this. How is fear limiting you? The key to mastering fear is courage. Courage, listen to me. Courage grows in the midst of fear. Courage, God, grows in the midst of fear. Courage grows in the midst of fear. Let me just give you something. Mark chapter 4 verse 40. This is the last scripture. Somebody say hallelujah. How many of you know this message is a personal message for you? How many of you feel it personally? So the question is that after this message, what are you going to do with the message? I'm going to like, oh, write it down. No! The way you respond to fear is by taking action because faith without works or faith without action is what is dead. Mark chapter 4 verse 40. Someone say hallelujah. That's weak. Someone say hallelujah. See, see what it says. He says, and he said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is it that ye have what? That means when you are fearful, faith is missing. When faith is there, fear is minimized. So, how do you become the person that lives low on fear? By becoming full of faith. How do you become full of faith? Romans 10, 17. And faith coming by hearing the word. And hearing the word. And hearing the word. And hearing the word. And hearing the word. You become full of faith by hearing. If Harvest has TV, YouTube, you don't play it often. You cannot be full of faith. You go back and hear often and often because things are always challenging your faith. Faith is a fight. So when you are being knocked out in a fight, you go for reinforcement. Reinforcement is the word. You turn to the YouTube. Look for the topic that pertains to you. Listen until faith arises. You listen until what? Faith arises. 2 Timothy 1 7. So, how do you stop fear? You build your faith. How do you stop fear? You build your faith. You stop fear by building your faith. How do you stop fear? Recount what God has done before. Everybody, look up here. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for telling me to focus on that. Everybody, look up here. This is what the Holy Spirit should tell you now. When David was going to face Goliath, and many of you here, you have Goliath in your business, you have Goliath in your life. And you, Goliath is that thing that looks at you and you know this is bigger than me. You know what I'm talking about? You are doing a business on 20, 30 million. There's a project for 250 million. You know that you are not mates. But in your heart, you feel as if I can do it. The way, let me tell you something there. Eh? There is a way you know that God has called you because to do something. You feel it in your heart that this is me. Although it's bigger. What did David do? Saul said, take my armor. David said, I'm sorry. I've not used this armor before. What did David say? David said, the God that delivered me out of the bear, out of the tiger, he said, will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. When you're in fear, this is how you break the power of fear. You'll begin to recount what God has done. You will tell yourself, Father, thank you. When I was, be- when I was meant to get into Access Bank, I was the only one I didn't get a cut of mark. But for some reason, you orchestrated it for me to enter. If you did it then, when I was not qualified, now that the promotion list is out and I'm not qualified, you do it again. You will tell yourself, when I was very sick and the doctor thought I would die, miraculously I came back to life. This fibroid cannot kill me because you have kept my life for a purpose. Are you getting me? Are you getting me? When David saw, he said, he said that he said he said the he said the Lord that killed the bear, killed the tiger. So people minimize their fear and increase their faith by recounting the goodness of God in their life. That's why the Bible says, "Out of the mount of baby and suckling your day strength." How does your day strength through their testimonies? And I say, you tell yourself first the blade, then the air, and the full corn. Are you here? So instead of you looking at the wrong thing, you say, Father, thank you. Because you have started. You will not stop halfway. 
Listen to me, everybody. Eh? Everybody, look, look at me. One lady told me something that really touched me last, this week. Last week. He said, my grandmother told me this when I was young. God is not a wicked God. He will not start wickedness with you. Relax. Praise God. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. Let's look at it again. again. Second Timothy 1 7. He said, what does it say? Quickly. He said, for God has, let's you want to go. Read it with the spirit of faith. Want to go. Yes. 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 Say, God has not given me the spirit of fear. But of power. Of love. And of sound mind. Say, I have the spirit of faith. If you believe, say yes. yes. If you believe, say yes. yes. If you believe, say yes. yes. Stand on your feet.